So there's certainly no shortage of parts and gadgets and things that we can buy for our bikes. And this is the time of year for the big trade shows, of course, at Eurobike first and now at Interbike here in the States, where they release, you know, tens of thousands of new parts and baubles and gadgets and bikes and everything. And it kind of begs the question, what should we spend our money on? Now, that's a pretty broad topic. So what I thought I would do is I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about what I tend to spend my money on, where I tend to find uh, the most bang for the buck maybe in some cases, or when I find it's worth to spend a little bit extra. But what am I willing to invest in to make my ride uh, more enjoyable or easier or faster, or all those things. And now keep in mind, this is my opinion on a few of the things. I'm not telling you that you know, you're dumb if you buy some of these things or the expensive things. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, I think that if you just want to buy the thing because it's, it's cool or it's shiny or it's, you know, interesting to you, great. There are worse things to spend your disposable income on. Um, as I always tell my clients, there are, there are many worse habits to have. The first place that I like to start and where I tend to substitute and spend a little bit more money on is with my handlebars. I think handlebars can go a long way towards making a bike more comfortable um, and just make the ride more enjoyable. It, it tends to be the next to the saddle, perhaps of course the most tactile thing that we interact with. Spending a little bit more on a nicely shaped bar can give us more hand positions. And I particularly like the, the 3T, the Ergo Nova Team Bar. It's their carbon bar. It has a little flat section on the top. It's not too deep, uh, and the reach is relatively short, which I like. And it's also a little bit more friendly to fit because of that. But the biggest thing that comes through that I really enjoy about these bars in particular is that they have just a little bit of give to them. There's a little bit of softness to um, how they react when you hit rough roads or, um, or hit a, 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 you know, a seam in the pavement or something like that. Um, they have just a bit of give or flex, and I mean that in a good way, um, that, is, that tends to be very absorptive, you might say. It just, it just really tends to, I, I like the bar because it, it kind of has a soft feel to it. I would also throw a couple of the zip bars into this category. I think they actually feel really good as well. Um, and also the Envy, um, the Envy bars. The, their aero version is pretty good, um, but I do like their standard shape as well. Now, these bars, of course, they're not free. They're actually quite expensive. They run from anywhere from $250 to $350. Um, but for a $300 investment, uh, I do think this is something that there's a, a pretty decent bang for the buck, and um, I think it's actually a, a pretty noticeable change in ride quality. Now, the next area, um, it would be with the tires. Uh, you know, there are a lot of companies out there that make nice tires, and it's definitely a bike part that I don't mind spending a bit more money on. When I have nice tires on my bike, I notice my bike rolls better, it corners better, it handles better descending, and a lot of times it can take a kind of average wheel set and really make it feel a few hundred dollars better than they actually are. So what makes a good tire? Well, what tires are made of and how they're constructed, that could be a whole series of videos on their own, but think of it this way, you know, tires are made mostly of rubber and fabric. And the really nice tires tend to have uh, more fabric and less rubber than say the cheaper tires. The cheaper tires tend to be, you know, heavier on the rubber and less fabric. So of course the, the these tires with more fabric in them have tend to have lower rolling resistances and they just tend to be, again, they tend to do their job and deform to the pavement and de deform to the road so that those uh, forces aren't transmitted through the bike to you. Now this does have a few downsides. Um, they may wear faster because there is less rubber involved. Some of them are a bit more prone to having cuts made in the, in the sidewalls or in the tread themselves, uh, but for me, you know, if I'm going to if I'm going to be on my bike for hours, I would just as soon spend 30 or 40 dollars more per tire and get something that's that's really nice and uh and just deal with it wearing out a little bit quicker. Now for bike shorts. I find that too many cyclists don't spend enough money or time thinking about their shorts. A lot of saddle issues are related to shorts that don't fit well or just kind of too cheap as far as the materials that they're made of. So I'd set aside a little bit of money to invest in some nice shorts, at least a few pairs. And, and there's kind of an interesting thing with shorts though, is 
if you spend a little bit more money, you get a really nice short. Often you can find something that will um, that will kind of match with you really well and it's just very comfortable for long periods. This, you spend a lot more money and you don't get a whole bunch in return. So I think there are some diminishing returns as far as that goes for some people. Now, um, I think trying you should try and shoot for spending them between seven, uh, 75 and $150 maybe on, on a pair of shorts. And it sometimes it takes some time to find the right shape, the right amount of contouring, um, and also just the right size, you know, some, some chamois patterns are, um, are just different and they, and they, and they match better with, uh, with, with different riders. So once you find something you like, that's time to buy a few of those. Um, now I do have clients that will swear by the super expensive, the 400, the $500 shorts. Um, I've tried them. I've used them. I just have never gotten comfortable with them. I've never matched up well, and it's not something that I find useful for me to spend my money on. So um, I just try and find uh, that in that in that sort of sweet spot in that area uh, for price things that work. And once I find something, I'll buy three or four pairs. The next is a seat post. Um, I've been known to actually, on certain bikes, I've had a carbon bike and I've invested in like a titanium seat post that has some setback to it. And the reason I've done this is if I, um, I, aside from the fact that a seat post can really help you fit your bike better by putting your saddle in the correct position, and, and it has a lot to do with making sure your hips in relation to your feet are kind of oriented in the best way. Um, but there's another benefit, I think, to really nice seat posts. They can, some carbon seat posts can do this. I have a couple, like I said, I've used a couple of titanium seat posts in the past that do a really good job of this. And it's, it really only applies though when you have, say, more than about six inches of seat post exposed out of the frame. Much like the handlebars did, they will flex just a little bit. And, and on, on the seat post, they flex a little bit to the back. And it just kind of provides a a very, very small, I'm not saying this is a huge amount, but a, a bit of, you can almost think of it as suspension. It's just one more um, movement that sort of uh, isolates you from some of the rougher um, uh, vibrations or bumps or things that, you're, that you experience when you're riding. Now, aero wheels. Now, this is something that um, I think people really should consider pretty heavily, of course, because of the cost. These are not cheap. Now, there are ways to get into the technically the aero wheel market for you know sometimes a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars cheaper than some of the some of the top of the line wheels the aero wheels are a, a scenario where I kind of diverge from my pragmatism a little bit and where I diverge from finding that price point somewhere or that sweet spot in the middle and the reason is what I've found is even you know for a lot of these budget aero wheels um, a lot of times you get what you pay for they are often built with um, they're built around rims that are deeper, um, but whether they're more aero, it's, it's definitely questionable in a lot of cases. Many of these don't have a whole lot of research and development behind them. They're not tested very much. And that's where, where I stand on these is, if I'm gonna invest the money, if I'm gonna spend you know, a little bit of money on an aero set, like I'm gonna find a cheaper set for $1,200 or $1,500. Frankly, most of the time, I'd rather spend $1,000 more than that and get something that I know is tested well and is generally there that the nicer wheels like the zips and the envies and the heads and things they're built around nicer hubs so they they tend to run better and smoother for longer they're strong enough these days in my opinion to to ride every day even and to have a wheel that is faster potentially can be lighter in some situations but um, tests well like I said in the wind tunnel um, I know is going to be of some benefit if I make it up to that, you know, those types of speeds. But also it's more durable and it's going to last longer. Um, and I'm not going to have to think about it or worry about it. Um, to me, that's that's worth the extra money. I would. So that's definitely one where it's kind of a go big or go home, in my opinion. But um, I'd love to, I'd, love, I'd be interested to see what people um, have opinions about that. So I've gone over all these things that I would spend my money on or where I think it sometimes can be worth it to spend money on. But there's one area, and I'll go over just briefly here, that I really am not too keen on spending money on. And this is has to do with aero bike frames, especially on just on the road end, but I'll get to the triathlon part too, or, tri or time trial. I definitely have an issue with some of the aero frames, primarily because of two reasons. One is they tend to be really expensive, for one, so we're spending a lot of money on them. Number two, many of them are kind of 
getting more and more difficult to fit. They're going with more proprietary parts and, uh, and it generally makes the fitting process not only more difficult, but sometimes for some, for many clients, it, it almost ends up impossible for them to achieve the fit they need. So from a practical standpoint, I take issue with that. And the third thing, and this is definitely no small matter, is that the math on the, on the benefit is pretty, pretty poor, actually. Um, if you run, if you kind of run through the aerodynamic numbers of where, you know, the, the most aero benefit comes from and, um, the frame is pretty low on the totem pole. And, and especially when you're talking about frames that can cost, you know, five grand, that's a, that's a, that can be a pretty poor investment for, for a lot of people, I think. Now, again, it all goes, I, aero frames, they look really cool often. And so if that's why you're getting it and it, and, and it works for you, then cool, that's fine. But for it to be sold with under this idea that, oh man, this is gonna make you this much faster, that's, a, that's actually a pretty tough road to, to haul. And again, like I said, it's especially when you compare it to simple things like, um, like helmets, your hel the aerodynamic benefit of a, a slightly more aero helmet versus the bike frame or uh, the shoe covers um, or even a, a snug fitting or a well fitting fitted jersey um, can can actually make a pretty big impact for just a few dollars really and and even in you know a very aero focused um, sport like like the, like triathlon or even in time trials you know more and more these days there for for many athletes there there is definitely a place for a round tubed uh, custom triathlon bike. Now, why round tube? Well, a lot of times, obviously, steel and titanium are easier to build uh, custom bikes out of. You can find, of course, carbon ones. But if you're someone that has a difficult time fitting some of these more proprietary, more aggressive uh, aero uh, time trial and triathlon bikes, um, which I see dozens of people every year that run into this problem, many of them would benefit from having a, you could have a custom bike built that yes, it's not as sexy, it's gonna have round tubes. Um, but you can have a bike built to you, for you know, specifically for you, and it would not only allow you to sustain your aero position for longer, which would then actually more than make up for the aerodynamic loss of the frame versus one of these aero frames. And in the process, you'd actually, in a lot of cases, you would spend significantly less money, especially when we're talking about uh, some of these aero frames that cost four, five, six thousand dollars, you can have a custom frame built for a couple grand. So that I think that would be actually a really interesting um, experiment to play around with. It would not be a cheap experiment, but it would be kind of interesting to see, uh, you know, a couple of riders uh, undertake that and see what, uh, see what the differences would have been for them. So that's all I have for this one. Let me know down in the comments, what kind of things do you, you know, are you willing to spend money on? And if you like this kind of video, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. That's it for now, everyone. Thanks, and I'll catch you next time.